welcome to my 50th YouTube video. Got night shade in my meadow, baby. Red weed in my corn. Black nightshade belongs to the Solanaceae family, which contains several dangerous members. Even though this group has familiar edibles like tomatoes, unfortunately black nightshade is often erroneously confused with its toxic relatives. This native plant isn't poison and is found all over the world. Many cultures use it as a source of food. Obviously, it is wise to be cautious. So before I continue, here are three harmful plants to watch out for. First is bittersweet nightshade, a non-native invasive vine that grows up fences and hedges in semi-shaded areas. It has purple flowers with a yellow beak. Its berries start out green, turn orange, and ripen to red. Often these variations occur at the same time on a plant. Misidentification shouldn't be a problem, since bittersweet nightshade has red berries, not dark ones like those of its cousin, black nightshade. Horse nettle is another plant to avoid. It has white flowers similar to those of black nightshade, but its stems and leaf midribs have spines, while those of black nightshade are smooth. Once both plants produce fruit, there's no problem with identity mix-up, since horse nettle has yellow berries and black nightshade has black ones. I've never seen belladonna where I live in Massachusetts. That's why I had to rely on photos from the internet. Since people who watch my videos may live in areas where it grows, it's important to show what it looks like. Belladonna is sometimes called black nightshade, but it's not the same plant. An example of why using common names causes problems. Belladonna flowers are large, bell-shaped, and purple or pink. Those of black nightshade are small, five-petaled, and white. Belladonna fruits are black, but are bigger and borne singly on a stem with large calyxes surrounding them. Black nightshade fruits are smaller and hang in clusters. But enough already about the nasty nightshades. The edible black nightshade is easily overlooked and hard to distinguish at first. This annual plant grows out of roadside curb cracks in poor soil among other weeds and where the earth has been disturbed. It sprawls all over the place and has smooth, weak stems. Leaves are alternate and sometimes have a purplish cast on their underside. People in other countries eat the shoots and leaves of black nightshade as a vegetable. When they first emerge, they might be confused with those of poisonous relatives, so proper ID is essential, and that's why I don't usually bother with them. They're found in mid-June and used before the plant flowers. A way to locate new leaves is to place a marker by the plants in autumn when they have ripe fruit. Hopefully the marker will still be there after the winter and you can watch for fresh leaves in the spring. If you collect them, it's imperative to use only tender shoots and very young leaves. To prepare, add these to boiling water and cook for 10 to 15 minutes. Mature leaves are often full of holes made by insects and are tough. These are bitter and shouldn't be used. But frankly, I found that even the younger leaves are somewhat bitter as well. If there's any doubt you have the right leaves, wait until the plant produces its edible berries and eat them instead. The inedible flowers begin to appear in late June and are found as late as October. They're white with five petals and a yellow beak. Often flowers and fruit appear on plants simultaneously. 
I'm interested in the berries because they're collectible over a long period and they taste good. They're available from midsummer through November. At first, they're green and not suitable to eat. Eventually, they turn deep purplish black. Then they're ripe and ready to collect. Don't gather them from areas close to roadways. Look for spots away from traffic. Their size varies. Some are little, like peas. Others resemble small blueberries. Their flavor is like a tomato with a sweet aftertaste and can be eaten raw or cooked. Their tiny seeds are easily chewed. Often both green and blackberries are on the same plant. Eat only the juicy blackberries, not the immature green ones. Mid to late September is the best time to pick berries in my area, but the season can be earlier or later depending on where you live. Be gentle when harvesting. Berries are delicate. If they're crushed, you'll see their numerous seeds. Use a shallow container to avoid squashing them. Throw out any green berries. Afterwards, remove their stems. This can be tedious. Berries can survive several frosts and still be good to eat. On the day a hard frost was predicted, I picked ripe berries off this uprooted plant. There were many unripe green berries I couldn't use, so I put the plant onto my compost pile. A few days later, when I glanced at the pile, I was surprised to find quite a few green ones had ripened, and this occurred after several frigid nights. Their leaves had wilted, but apparently these berries were somewhat cold-hardy. I collected more harvests from that supposedly depleted plant. So yes, berries can deal with a few frosts, which is a good thing to know, as they're one of the last fruits to appear in the fall. There are several ways to use fresh berries. Eat them raw with other late summer fruits, or they can be cooked. Here I added some to cut apples, covered the mix with topping, and baked it until the crust darkened. Then I served it to my granddaughter as an unusual dessert. Berries can be frozen. Place them individually on parchment paper. After they freeze, store them in glass jars or freezer bags. Even though black nightshade has some dangerous relatives, don't be discouraged from trying its delightful ripe berries. If I was you, little bluebird, I'd be long gone. Got squirrels in my rafters, weevils in my head. Squirrels in my rafters, weevils in my head. If 
I was you, little bluebird I'd up and fly away I'd 